Hey there, everybody. Welcome to a couple of episodes that we're going to call the Return of the East L.A. Cutaway. Remember this one? It is an old craftsman made by Kay for Spiegel, a mail order company. And it is actually a K model K1 that was put out about the time that people were starting to respond to the Gibson 400 single cutaway, huge body. And not everybody could afford one of those and not everybody can now. And in fact, when you run across these old big, huge bodied arch tops, whether it's a K, a Harmony, a Silvertone, an Old Craftsman, an Airline, any of those, you kind of want to keep your eye on what these are because they're kind of more valuable or more sought after being the biggest arch top bodies. Now, I put an episode series together, a playlist about this guitar when I built it out. It's right up there, right about now. Click on it if you want to, but in short, this guitar has come back to me, and oddly enough, it's not anything about the neck that we had to put back on, or all these numerous cracks that we had to fix, or any of that. It's certainly not about this original silver tone K pancake, Kleenex box, whatever you want to call it, pickup. But instead, it's more so about the upgrades that we made in the area of the tuners and a fancy electronic gadget that we put on here. Instead of cutting holes in the body, what I didn't want to do with this guitar is punch new holes in the body that couldn't be fixed with a snapped off toothpick and some glue. So we were able to mount all the controls, volume and tone and everything, underneath this pit guard that was, the graphic on it was given to us by Laurent Bompard, an artist in Europe, and we put a thumb wheel control, tone and volume control underneath here, and we're going to revisit that. But in the first episode here, we are going to talk about these tuners. I put Gibson tuners on it. We're going to talk about what was there, the condition of the headstock when I got it, and what a difference it can make if you make a mistake on tuners. Now, early, early on, years ago, I did an episode when I was doing cigar box guitars and that kind of thing about tuners, and I went through different configurations of tuners, and if you're just getting started out and you're interested in what the differences are, and especially economy and weight of things. That episode is right up there. It's about tuners. So that said, we're going to start off this little playlist as an update to the East LA Cutaway playlist with a revisit of these tuners. So let's hit the bench. All right, we got the strings. I haven't told you about this tool. This is something off of Amazon. It fits all kinds of tuners up to including Grover Imperials. It is padded. It works great. And this thing, this Milwaukee pistol grip, this comes in handy for all kinds of things. If you want something on your Christmas list, this is probably the one. You know what? I think I'll give you a link to these products below. Anyway, now that we've got everything loosened up, let's talk about what happened here. This guitar came with a set of what I call butter bean tuners, like this old silver tone. Look at that neck. This is from the late 30s, early 40s. But you see there's open gear butter bean tuners. Now these are nice. Uh, they're original. Um, People would say, hey, leave them on there. But I'll tell you what, people start putting big thumper strings on these. There's no escutcheons here or anything. This is economy stuff. This is K Silvertone. But whenever I'm going to redo something like this, what I'll do is I'll pull these off. I'll leave them with the guitar, and I'll try to upgrade to what I consider a better set of tuners. Now, 
one of those things I think is a better set of tuners is something that says Gibson Deluxe and there's kind of this vintage Keystone uh, knob here my brain is slipping away I'm getting old uh, but you'll see people upgrading tuners to even more expensive tuners than this so I'll typically try to take up to something um, that's better in the area of tuners and that's what I did with this the problem is is that some of these strings the people that play them and I'm going to give you a link at the end of the episode you'll you'll follow through it'll show my email contact but you'll see um, RJ Mishu playing this guitar and kind of giving you an idea what it'll do but the problem is is this third um, tuner up here at the top of the headstock it wasn't even the biggest string it's the one of the intermediate strings started backing itself off and not wanting to keep in tune and slipping a little bit so we're going to change out these tuners for a set of the brand Mighty Might and um, before we do that I'm going to kind of go through a couple of these configurations because here's what happens sometimes you will find you look at a guitar and you always want to do this when you're buying a guitar an old arch top or something is you'll look and you'll see that there's discoloration in a line right here and a crack now problem with putting tuners right in a row anything that's right in the row along the run of the grain is going to be prone to splitting so let's say I put a set of tuners on here and the tuner is just a little bit bigger and instead of working them out I drive them in what do you know I got a cracked headstock so we're going to kind of think about that in the background while we're considering what we're going to put on here and let me get these strings off here and turn this over and we'll see what's on the other side you'll be able to see the tuners on this guitar have been changed a bunch of times and I'll show you what to look out for and how to fix what's underneath there and stabilize it while you're in there oh before I forget when you're pulling your strings off you want to make sure you keep the track of the Eli Green hoodoo voodoo bead and you want to remember that right up there this thing has a floating bridge and floating bridges are held in place by the pressure of the strings and you'll remember that we intonated this by moving the bridge around and sanding it to the top of the body and even though I put marks there I'm going to put tape here so I know exactly where to put the floating bridge when I put the strings back on because I want to take all the strings off here so it's just as easy as putting a piece of tape it's already trying to move and boxing out where that bridge went and you can see it fits right down in there now okay again you gotta love this vise it's got speed knobs on it so we just put that there like this and tighten it up and it will hold the guitar just about anywhere you could paint you could finish or do whatever but you see these tuners that are on here are exactly like these they're just the silver version you see that now you can pick up sets of these for about forty dollars used that are in good shape because again people like to just go uh, on a new guitar upgrade the tuners right away and so they'll pull these off you often find them in the original um, packaging that the upgrade tuners came in because they'll fit but what we're going to do is we're going to take right off the magnetic strip our standard drill bit we'll get this force you know we were actually carving pumpkins with this a, a week or so ago there we go and we're going to pull off these tuners here oh before I forget you can see that Tammy signed this guitar headstock on the back right there okay you can always tell when I've worked on something because there's chick flick teal screws in it and then we pop these out 
you're going to find that I have already or had already where there were holes from other tuner configurations taken some bacon flavored toothpicks and some glue and put them in the holes and snapped them off that made everything underneath there smooth and given anything a, a crack to start so let's pop these off here and have a closer look okay let's work backwards a little bit here I have a 10 millimeter is that a 10? It sure is. And these are held on here. Like so, I want to show you this configuration here. So, you have a part here that comes out some. And then you have a washer that's usually domed on one side. Don't forget that. And then you have this threaded thing that fits down in the threaded sleeve of this and that's the configuration so let me get the rest of these off of here okay before I forget about it I told you a little bit earlier that this tuner was bad so I basically got a set of five tuners I can use I'm not going to pedal this one off to somebody else so I put a piece of tape on it so I can remember that it's no good and then you'll see these other ones come into play on a, a cigar box or a coffee can or license plate guitar that has a lighter set of strings where we won't have a repeat of the problem so these get sorted in the parts bin this one is just junk I don't trust something once it fails me Okay, while we're here, I want to keep revisiting something because I don't want you thinking you're doing something good and creating a problem. Remember, if you start off with butter bean tuners that have these small holes where the shaft of the tuner comes through and there's no escutcheon, which is kind of a liner right here. They, they look like this and they fit over that like so. Those holes for those small butter bean tuners are very different in size see here and this fits down over here once you have this mounted to the headstock that is very different in size than one of these which has this part that fits into the headstock with the sleeve that screws down so let's say you started off with a set of inline butter bean tuners they could be covered they could be open gear it doesn't matter so you have a hole. Now this is the size of bit that you use to put in tuners like this, the fatter tuners with the sleeve here that goes in from the bottom. Now when you take this after a hole that's as small as this, if this thing starts rooting around, it's going to tear out. It's going to give you a mess. So start off with a smaller hole then I want you to think about using graduated bits like these they'll go into the hole you have already and, can, and continue to work down like so now if you have a choice between using one that gets fatter quicker and one that's longer and the taper is slower I would definitely use this but use care next thing don't go all the way through because if you go all the way through this way and then the other way it will blow out either here or there and you don't want it so let's turn this over now again if you are going to replace something that is a shaft size of this or slightly bigger consider using these with the escutcheons calculate how much room you have here and what the strength is going to be before you start drilling the mega holes that are necessary for this cracks here always watch for them when you're buying stuff especially if you think the tuners have been changed okay we have everything off here. You can see where I've worked on this before because I have taken and put in toothpicks where the old holes were before I put on the replacement tuners that I used. So I'm just going to take a toothpick. I'm going to dip it in some tight bond and the holes that I just had in, whether they match up or don't, I just take the end, put glue on it, stick it in there snap it and turn it and I'm going to wait for this to dry a little bit and these old holes have wood in them now 
And I think you can figure out how to do the other side, correct? All right, there we go. There's the last one. There are two tools that you are really going to want to have in your arsenal. One is called a violin maker's knife. It is good for going along and getting little pieces of wood off like that. Like these nubs from the toothpicks and a reamer. I've shown you this on kit guitars where there's a bridge mounted to anchors on the top of the, the guitar where there's a block. Again, you start messing around with these huge drill bits and the next thing you know, something's tore out. So if something needs to be closer than that, you can just take your reamer and remember, the shoulder on these doesn't go all the way through the neck anyway, so you can just put this in here and spin this back and forth a couple of times. Violin maker's knife, reamer. All right, guys, starting to look like Swiss cheese in there, but everything's got wood in it glued up and ready to go. So now we're ready to put the tuners in again. We're using the one with the shoulder that's threaded in here and has this thread with the washer that is domed in one side and flat on the other. So we're going to, because the mounting screw that holds everything in place is over here, we're going to want to drill new holes over here. So let's just take our drill and start drilling through. No mistake, because here's the bottom line. If you use a bit and you're not paying attention, you go all the way through, you don't want that. So, if you take a bit and figure out, okay, that shoulder needs to be that much, and I, I need to do this, and mark this off with tape, when you're drilling in, you can tell where to stop. But the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and put these in and come from the bottom. Again, domed side of the nut up towards this part. And we're just going to get these started here, because we're going to make sure that everything is going to line up in a way that it's straight and you have proper clearance. Sometimes when you cut your own headstocks, believe me, the headstock is too wide and you end up cutting this and it's rubbing against here, especially on these ones that have this radius. So let me get these mounted and we'll tighten them up just enough to be straight and then we'll drill the holes that for the mounting screws. Okay, everything is lined up nice. I have the right a bit it, it doesn't need to be too big and you always want to drill pilot holes so you don't crack it and then you th this tape dispenser for binding jobs and just whatever is the best again i'm going to take a little piece of tape here i don't need to go any more than that and so when i drill these when that flapper hits the top of the screw retainer i know i'm in deep enough All right, now, if you don't care for this Swiss cheese mess and you want to hide that, you can use any number of these furniture scuff markers, golden oak, which is light, dark walnut, which is kind of like this, and red oak. So there's a, a number of ways to mark these up. I don't care to do that. I like battle scars. All right, there we go. Now all we got to do is flip this thing over. And we will tighten that up. Again, this vise is incredible. I love it. And we're going to tighten these up. And I'm such a weirdo. I like to make sure that all these are in the exact same position so I can sleep at night and don't need therapy. Hey, have you seen that Broncho? Broncho, B-R-O-N-C-H-O video called... I got a psychiatrist for you. There you go. You can't live without that one, especially some of y'all. All right, there we go. Easy money. New tuners. They will hold the heaviest strings. We might see some going on here. 60, 56, 54. Sometimes you don't put 9s. You put 10s, 12s, even 
14s or 16s on these arch tops. So everything has to stay in place. Now, we're going to be going in the next episode into that little high technology, high fidelity, whatever you want to call it, thumb screw, thumb wheel control right here because it just didn't turn out to be durable enough for this clunker. So we're going to take off the pick guard and get into the wiring here. We'll talk a little bit about this K pickup and all kinds of other stuff. Last thing I want to tell you is anytime you take the strings loose on an arch top, you want to mark off where the floating bridge was. Now I've done an episode about intonation, about all kinds of different kinds of guitars. It's right up there right about now. And what it tells you is from the back of the nut, notice I have the nut tape too. Because the last thing you want to do is lose the original nut and sometimes they come loose. If you hit the head against something it'll pop loose. But I got the nut taped off and I also have it taped off where the bridge was. Because on this guitar we actually, and a good luthier, will make sure that when any work is done on a bridge that they will sand the bridge to the top of the arch top so you just tape down some sandpaper cover up the f holes do dust control and get this to fit right here you always want to remember the floating bridge is graduated it takes into account the differences in string sizes diameters whatever you want to call it and you can kind of tell a guitar that is that has a floating bridge it's intonated properly because someone has measured from the 12th or the, the back of the nut to the 14th fret and then put that measurement down to where the floating bridge goes and then it's a matter of tuning it to the tune you want for each string and then hitting the string on the 12th fret and adjusting the bridge ever so slightly. My guitars are junky so don't be surprised when you see magic marker, silver magic marker or paint pen marks on the bridge and on the top of the guitar that said thanks for watching i hope i helped you out here think your tuners out don't crack the headstock and don't put on junk i will see you next time don't forget to give me a like and a subscribe if you haven't